In China and Japan, high-speed rail isn't a futuristic dream, it's reality. China has built over 48,000 kilometers of high-speed rail in just two decades. Its latest CR450 prototype has already broken records, reaching 450 kilometers per hour, nearly as fast as a commercial jet. Japan's legendary Shinkansen has been running since 1964 with zero passenger deaths and record-breaking punctuality. But while some nations race ahead, others can't seem to get past the starting line. In the United States, UK, Canada and Australia, high-speed rail has been talked about for decades, yet barely exists. The US has one high-speed rail project, but after 16 years and $128 billion, there's barely 120 miles of track. The UK's HS2 rail line is years behind schedule and billions over budget. Canada and Australia still stuck in planning stages. Why have some countries mastered high-speed rail while others can't even get started? Let's find out. At the turn of the century, high-speed rail didn't exist in China. The country's rail system was slow, outdated and struggling to keep up with rapid urbanization. Trains crawled along tracks that couldn't meet the demands of a booming population. Then came 2008, the year everything changed. China's first high-speed rail line, stretching between Beijing and Tianjin, officially opened. It was a small start, but what followed was nothing short of an infrastructure revolution. In just two decades, China has built the largest high-speed rail network on Earth, spanning 48,000 kilometers, with no signs of slowing down. By the end of 2025, that number will surpass 50,000 kilometers, as 2,600 kilometers of new track are set to open this year alone. The scale is staggering. The Beijing-Shanghai high-speed rail line, covering 1,318 kilometers, now cuts travel time to just 4.5 hours, a journey that would take over 12 hours by car. Meanwhile, China continues to push the limits of speed. Its latest CR450 prototype has already shattered records, reaching 450 km per hour, making it the fastest high-speed train in the world, nearly as fast as a commercial jet. But this transformation hasn't come cheap. Since 2008, China has invested over $1.1 trillion into high-speed rail, building an average of 2,100 kilometers of new track every year, the equivalent of constructing a rail line from New York to Miami annually. And it's not just about expansion, it's about execution. The Beijing-Shanghai high-speed rail line, a 1,318-kilometer megaproject, was completed in just 39 months, for $33 billion, a speed and scale that few nations could match. No other country has built high-speed rail this fast, at this scale, with this level of commitment. While China has focused on scale and speed, Japan has mastered precision and safety. The Shinkansen, introduced in 1964, wasn't just a new train, it was the birth of high-speed rail itself. More than a technological feat, it became a symbol of Japan's post-war resurgence and remains one of the most trusted transportation systems in the world. For nearly 60 years, Japan's bullet trains have transported over 10 billion passengers with an unmatched safety record, zero passenger fatalities. The Takedo Shinkansen, Japan's busiest line, carries over 450,000 passengers per day, totaling more than 170 million riders annually. And when it comes to punctuality, nothing compares. The average delay across the entire Shinkansen network? Less than 30 seconds. A one-minute delay in Japan isn't just noticed, it makes national news. Japan's approach isn't about building fast, it's about building right. Take the Tohoku Shinkansen, which connects Tokyo to northern Japan. The first section opened in 1982, but the full extension wasn't completed until 2010, nearly three decades later. Unlike China's state-driven approach, Japan follows a carefully phased, profit-driven model, ensuring that every new section is financially sustainable before breaking ground. Two nations, two vastly different strategies. Yet both have mastered high-speed rail in ways that the rest of the world can only watch.
Despite their wealth and engineering prowess, the US, UK, Canada and Australia have struggled to lay down a single mile of true high-speed rail. California's high-speed rail, approved by voters in 2008 for $33 billion, promising to connect Los Angeles and San Francisco in under three hours. Today, the cost has exploded to $128 billion, and after 16 years, only 120 miles of track have been built, with no trains running. If you want to see exactly how California's bullet train went off the rails, check out our full breakdown of the project. Texas Central Railway? A proposed high-speed link between Dallas and Houston, modelled after Japan's Shinkansen. The plan was announced over a decade ago, but funding struggles and government roadblocks have kept the project on life support, and it may never leave the station. The UK's HS2 project, once envisioned as a game-changer for British Rail, it has instead become one of the most expensive infrastructure failures in modern history. By 2025, the project's cost had ballooned past $80 billion, forcing the government to cancel major portions of the northern route. We covered HS2's failures in detail in another video, so if you're curious about how Britain's biggest rail project fell apart, be sure to watch that. Canada. In February 2025, the government announced Alto High Speed Rail, a 1,000-kilometre corridor connecting Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal and Quebec City, with speeds of 300 kilometres per hour. But despite committing $3.9 billion to planning, the project lacks full funding and many doubt it will ever be built, especially given Canada's long history of failed rail proposals. Australia? The Sydney-Newcastle high-speed rail project has been in planning for years. While the government has set aside $500 million Australian million for studies, no tracks have been laid, no stations have been built and no trains have been ordered. Drilling finally began in November 2024 to determine the route, but even the shorter Sydney to Central Coast section is estimated to cost $32 billion Australian dollars and take 12 years to build for a single segment. Why have China and Japan mastered high-speed rail while countries like the United States, the UK, Canada and Australia remain stuck at the station? One of the biggest reasons is funding. In China, the government has traditionally financed most of its high-speed rail expansion, allowing for rapid construction without delays from political debates. With a single authority controlling planning, financing and execution, China can approve and build projects at unmatched speed. Recently, China has even started welcoming private investment, like in the Hangzhou, Shaojing, Taizhou high-speed railway, which became the country's first privately controlled high-speed line in 2022. But overall, the government still drives the expansion, ensuring consistency and long-term vision. Contrast that with Western countries, where high-speed rail is often a political battlefield. In the US, UK, Canada and Australia, projects depend on a mix of government and private funding, leading to constant disputes over who pays, who profits and who controls the system. This back and forth creates delays, drives up costs and, more often than not, kills projects before they even begin. Land acquisition is another major hurdle. In China, the government owns the land and can allocate space for new rail lines quickly. But in the US, UK and Australia, complex legal battles and environmental reviews add years of delays and billions in extra costs. Even if a country secures funding and land, actually building high-speed rail is another challenge entirely. China has mastered the art of efficiency, keeping costs between $17 to $21 million per kilometre. That's less than half the cost of Europe and a fraction of what the US is spending. But how does China build so cheaply? Standardised designs, trains, bridges and tunnels follow a unified blueprint, reducing engineering costs. Mass production, China's massive scale allows for bulk material purchases, lowering prices. Efficient project management, one authority oversees everything, reducing red tape. Viaducts and bridges, China elevates tracks more often, avoiding costly land disputes and minimising environmental damage. Maybe the biggest reason lies in the mindset. China and Japan see high-speed rail as a long-term economic investment, driving regional development and boosting productivity. But in the US, the UK, Canada and Australia, 
transportation has followed a different path. Corporate influence played a major role in shaping transportation policies. Throughout the 20th century, automobile manufacturers, oil companies and the aviation industry pushed aggressively for investments in highways and airports while rail was left behind. Decades of massive highway expansion and a vast network of affordable domestic flights have shaped how people move. Those countries tend to judge high-speed rail by immediate profitability, debating whether passenger demand justifies the cost. Now, with gridlocked highways and overburdened airports, they're realising what they left behind. But is it too late to catch up? Other countries aren't waiting around. Instead of playing catch-up, nations like Morocco, Saudi Arabia and Indonesia are leaping ahead, building high-speed rail networks from scratch. Morocco became Africa's high-speed rail pioneer in 2018 with Al Barak, a 320 km per hour train that cuts travel time between Casablanca and Tangier in half. After a decade of planning, Morocco is now expanding its network to 1,500 km by 2030. Saudi Arabia took a different approach, launching the Haramain high-speed railway in 2018 to serve millions of pilgrims travelling between Mecca and Medina. The 453-kilometre journey, once an exhausting car ride, now takes under two hours in air-conditioned comfort. Indonesia joined the high-speed rail club in 2023 with Wush, Southeast Asia's first bullet train. Built with China's support, it connects Jakarta and Bandung at 350 km per hour, slashing a three-hour drive to just 40 minutes. So if countries like Morocco, Saudi Arabia and Indonesia, places with fewer resources and less rail infrastructure than the US, UK, Canada and Australia can pull this off, why can't the wealthiest nations in the world? It's not just about money or demand, it's about priorities and political will. In much of the Western world, high-speed rail remains a political battlefield stuck in endless debates, legal battles and budget overruns. So can these nations course correct? Or will high-speed rail remain a dream while the rest of the world races ahead? What do you think? Is it too late for the US, UK, Canada and Australia to catch up? Or can they finally make high-speed rail a reality? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this deep dive, make sure to like, share and subscribe for more Mega Build stories.